poor. It's the meat we trust. But should we? How robust is your inspection method? Our inspection methods are extremely robust. The pig care label says so. We are farmers and we want to be caring for our animals. The label, a guarantee the pigs are farmed safely and humanely. But activists say otherwise. That the whole pig care labelling scheme is a complete nonsense. And it, it basically, it's just a bogus scheme to mislead consumers into buying a product. And here's why. A rat in a pig factory farm shares company with the living and the dead. Showed squalid conditions, uh, overcrowded pens with young pigs completely covered in their own feces. And the pork from this farm has been sold with the pig care label. They found dozens and dozens of rats running over the animals. Um, just shocking conditions. And, and Hans Creek, spokesman for SAFE, the animal rights campaigners. One of the saddest uh, sights that, um, that I saw on that footage was uh, this large sow, and she had given birth in that crate, but because her rear end was squashed up against the wall, her picklers never really had a chance. This video was taken by animal rights activists called Farm Watch earlier this year in a South Island piggery. They found extremely wet, damp, concrete pens. They had no dry places for them to lie whatsoever. They found another dead pig lying around. A farm with pigs that have been passed by inspectors as fit for consumption. So, you know, it was, well, really hell on earth for those animals. If you want to see what a depressed pig looks like, New Zealand, take a look. It's five years since comedian Mike King blew the whistle on pig factory farming. I'm a bloke who likes to know where his next meal's coming from. On Sunday, he revealed why he'd turned against the industry he'd once promoted. These pigs were chewing the bars. It was like they were screaming for you to help. Under pressure, the government agreed to reform the industry. And the notorious stalls that hold sows will be gone by the end of next year. Well, shortly after um, you, you exposed the, the cruelty of intensive pig farming five years ago, uh, we know that pork sales dropped significantly. Yet five years after our first story, different pig farm, more allegations of suffering animals. We'd seen those pictures. Now Sunday wanted to give the farmer a chance to give his side of the story. I'll get it. Ian Sinclair. Good look, we're here because um, about your pig farm. So what would the farmer have to say about the footage? We definitely would like to get your opinion on it and your reaction to their, their concerns. Really? The reaction, well, like suspicion. He wondered if we were recording. If they have we are recording. We he told us to turn the camera off. We agreed not to identify and locate him and his farm in return for his cooperation. The farmer didn't want to give us an interview on camera, but off camera he did concede that the farm watch footage didn't show his farm in the best light. As for the rats, he said he spent two and a half thousand dollars over the previous three months trying to eradicate them. And to show that there's another side to his farm, for a more balanced picture, he let us in to film for ourselves. He showed us seven areas. We saw piglets on straw in outdoor pens where conditions did look better than the farm watch video. He showed us another area where there were large pens with piglets in them and straw. Do you accept then his argument that you only showed one perspective? Well, it's great that he has also some um, slightly more humane systems in, in place, but that still doesn't justify the way the other pigs were kept. You know, how can you say, I have some better systems as well, and then justify the other ones? It just doesn't work. Our access to this farm of more than 3,000 pigs was restricted. One area that concerned us was that farm watch footage of the sagging ceiling. We were only allowed to film the pigs, not the ceiling. The pigs were removed after our visit. We did see materials ready to repair the shed. Farm buildings, he says, were damaged by the earthquake and recent storm. 
But the farmer alleged the activists may have doctored the footage and moved items. No, that's absolute nonsense. Why do you say nonsense? Well, because I know the people that do this filming and I trust those people. I saw the footage the first thing in the morning when the activists came back from that farm. So I can guarantee you that that footage was taken on that farm. The activists strenuously deny they moved items, but how did they get in? The farmer insisted it was the activists who broke the law. When they got into a locked shed, he was keen to show us the padlock. No, farmers didn't break in into this farm. They actually went in through open doors. There were locks on several doors, but some of the doors were actually left open and that's where they went in. The farmer says farm watch jumped a fence and that's illegal. What do you say? Oh, it may well be illegal. They certainly weren't invited on that farm. But we think that this is a very small crime compared to the suffering of those animals. And SAFE reveals this was not Farmwatch's first visit to the same farm, that they shot this earlier video in March of last year. Well, last year we met up with the activists from the, uh, the group Farmwatch, and they showed me some footage that they filmed in, in March 2013. They showed dead, rotting animals left in pens with live animals. Really disgusting. And only a short time before this 2013 footage was taken, the farm had just had a yearly audit and even received a pig care label, the industry's own stamp of approval. I contacted uh, MPI, which is the Ministry for Primary Industries, to make a complaint. And to their credit, they went out and they investigated the farm and instructed the farmer basically to clean up his act. Did he? Well, according to MPI, the farmer did because we have in writing from MPI that in August they went to revisit the farm and they found that significant improvements had been made and that the farm was now compliant with the pig welfare code. Then in April 2014, activists filmed this second nocturnal visit to see if the farm really was improved. SAFE's verdict, a year after they first alerted inspectors, it was worse. So why do you think a year later you still have the same situation. Clearly MPI is failing in their work to enforce the Animal Welfare Act and ensure that these animals would not continue to suffer. We've made the complaint, they knew there were issues on that farm, they promised ongoing monitoring and yet when we go back we find this sort of suffering again, somebody's not doing their job here. So who carries the can for this? Minister, what's your opinion of MPI's refusal to receive the footage when we offered it to them? Well, that's a thing that MPI will have to talk for themselves. They are the regulator. I am the minister. You're, you're their minister. I am the minister. And is this model farming? Yep. That sow can't turn around, can it? Uh, no, she can't. For a month. This is the image the pig industry does want you to see. Happy, healthy porkers. We want to maintain the health and welfare of our pigs and diseases as a key component that we want to uh, maintain. It's the piggery of the industry spokesman. Ian Carter is chairman of the New Zealand Pork Board, which has oversight of the pig care label. These pigs have, have been weaned off their mothers and they're in a social group now. They've got feed 24 hours a day. And right here, he claims, is the typical face of intensive pig farming. So, we showed him that other piggery in the farm watch video. I mean, I see rats scurrying over the pigs. You think the public would be happy with that? No, no, I, the, the level of rats that we're seeing there is not acceptable and the industry does not see that as an acceptable uh, management tool. So why wouldn't New Zealanders look at that and go, I don't want pork anymore if all the farms look like that? What would you say to that reaction? Uh, my comment is that it's not a typical farm and, and you will see from our scores um, throughout the industry on this aesthetics and, and the visual and the pig care accreditation program that this is not a typical farm. Scored and he emphasises the inspection system for the pig care label is independent. So the system is, is far greater than any other independent audit system that is available overseas and the industry will continue to respond uh, because it relies on its consumers. The key point, I guess, is that it's, it's about consumers. Consumers are wanting to know how something's being farmed now. 
and they're prepared. Gregor Fife sells pork without cages. That means Freedom Farms allow the pigs to raise their young in open fields. It's been enormous. I mean, we're only six, nearly seven years old now. Um, we've grown roughly 40% a year for that entire period. He puts amazing. it down to trust in his product. He uses a different labelling system from intensive farmers. It's critical to have a third party certifier that can be trusted. Uh, in our case, we use the SPCA. They set their own welfare standards. They take the lead on welfare and they have independent auditors who come on and they're not in the industry, they're outside of the industry thinking about animal welfare and nothing else. They have just over two litres a year. By so contrast, Ian Carter's intensive farm does still have farrowing crates and those narrow cages where pregnant sows give birth are not going to be banned. That sow can't turn around, can it? Uh, no, she can't. For a month? No. No, she has, she has the opportunity to have water and feed and feed and suckle her piglets. It largely gives her the opportunity to nurse her piglets without the competition of anybody else. You know, but look, Ian, I, I step outside here and I see an empty country. Why do you need to pack pigs into little cages when you've got all this room in this country? Because the soil conditions in our particular area aren't conducive to having our animals out there. We are conscious that this environment has proven to be the best way to minimise mortality on those piglets and give more piglets a, a life. We like to we eat our own pork. For Ian Carter, his best consumer guarantee is the fact that he feeds his family off his own farm. Would you eat pork from the farm that we showed you the footage of? I don't need to because I've got my own. Oh, would you? <laughs> um, it goes through a robust process system. But obviously my preferred option is to eat it from a farm that meets these sort of standards. Like that's not that. That's correct. You'd prefer not to eat the pig, the pork off that farm. And that's why we've got a process to try and manage that, that situation so our consumers have confidence that they're getting pigs from farms in these conditions. But remember, that other farm in question carries a pig care label, a guarantee to consumers that the farm has been inspected and approved by our own industry. The inspectors grade farms into green, amber or red categories. The pig uh, farm was downgraded a little bit from a green pig cash label to an amber one. And an amber one means that, according to the industry, that he wasn't doing his paperwork very well and, and there was a few other little issues. But the welfare of the pigs and the health of the pigs was perfectly acceptable. However, it was restored to full green status last year after follow-up monitoring. When Sunday became involved, it did drop back to amber, which means corrective action. But it still carries that pig care label. Why should they believe that that system is working if it didn't work here? The audit process is an annual audit, which provides information on a given day that doesn't negate the responsibilities of the farmer, the individual farmer and the wholesaler who are purchasing those animals. It provides tools, it provides information for them to manage the operation and those pigs have been taken off the market now they have been identified. If the pig care inspectors find any infringements of the animal welfare code they're supposed to call in the Ministry for Primary Industries. So wouldn't it be better for MPI to step up a bit, step up to the plate and do this job? Um, MPI are response base, you, 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 you're going to have to ask them that question. And here's where the story takes a curious turn. We approached Nathan Guy, Minister of Primary Industries, and asked him for comment. At first, he declined an on-camera interview, saying that we should take this farm watch video and send it to the ministry itself, because they are the regulators. But when we approached the ministry, they also didn't want to appear on camera, and they refused our offer to send them this footage. So we decided to catch up with the Minister at a conference where he blamed SAFE and FarmWatch. I'm disappointed that this information hasn't gone to MPI straight away. As soon as I became aware of the property, I said to MPI, you need to go and inspect the property. Can you not see that the public might say, what's going on here? How robust is your inspection method? Our, ro our inspection methods are extremely robust. When anyone has concerns about animal welfare, MPI go and investigate them. They've been in this week and done that, 
there may be some corrective actions as a result. Minister, what's your opinion of MPI's refusal to receive the footage when we offered it to them? Well, that's a thing that MPI will have to talk for themselves. They are the regulator. I am the minister. You're, you're their minister. I am the minister. Will you be investigating I that? am further strengthening our animal welfare laws through regulations that are going to be passed through Parliament with the Animal Welfare Bill that will give the codes, and there are about 16 different codes, more teeth. So it's up to MPI. I mean, this footage should have gone to MPI in the first place so that MPI could have responded, not be sat on for months or weeks. It should go to MPI who is the regulator and I'm disappointed that that didn't happen. Thanks very much. Within an hour, Nathan Guy's ministry had requested the footage. It's a great place for rats. Yet to Hans Creek of Safe, that pig farm is just a symptom of a wider problem. It makes a mockery of it, doesn't it? So on the one hand, they will try not to support his farmer by saying, oh, you know, he's not a good farmer. But at the same time, it's good enough to get their pig hair logo. So something is really wrong there.